Hi everyone, Yevgeny here with the Ink 12. Today, I want to talk to you about the Fantasia by Opus 88. Before we talk about the pen though, I wanted to bring up two things. First, the pen was provided to me at a discount for review by Pen Chalet. Second, I've started a Patreon so you can help support me over at patreon.com slash the Ink 12. Now, that's going to help pay for pens, inks, a giveaway every now and then, but most importantly, it's going to help me buy treats for those two. So let's go ahead and talk about the Fantasia by Opus 88. And for that, let's switch cameras. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Fantasia by Opus 88. As you can see, it comes in a very nice decorative box with a red outer sleeve protecting the black inner box. And inside that inner box, we have the pen, the instructions, and the eyedropper, which pretty good eyedropper. I've always been impressed by the eyedroppers for the Opus 88s, uh, especially the ones in the Chloros. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at one other thing about this box that makes it rather unique, and I honestly kind of like it. So keep this view in mind for a second. There's the pen. Now, we look at the end of the box. Way to go, Opus. Way to go. I like what you guys did there, putting the actual picture of the pen on the end of the box. Classy move. Let's you know what you're getting. And make sure that you've actually got the product inside that you want. I mean, there's been times when I've picked up one of my boxes for a Pelican or a Sailor, and it's like, wait a second. I can't find the sticker on here what's supposed to be inside. And if you've got plenty of boxes, which up until a few weeks ago I did, that can be a nightmare. So let's quit talking about the box, though, and talk about the pen itself. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Fantasia by Opus 88. I like the blue color. It's very nice, and the greenish blue for the resin body is a good contrast to the blue of the cap. So the cap and the end piece are both ebonite. The main body, as well as the section, are resin. And you get a very nice branded stainless steel nib. And if you look at the nib and the feed there, it's very well built. Now, I was talking about the section here before I cap it back up for some size comparisons. I wanted to actually point out that is a small section. Like, no matter how you grip the pen, unless you, like, praying mantis grip it with just the tips of your fingers, you're going to be resting on the threads. So that's one thing that you want to consider when you're buying the pen. Now, a couple other features here. Let's go ahead and cap that back up for a second. Is that in the cap, let's see if I can get that. I like what they did with the Opus 88 and the Fantasia on the cap itself. It's a very, very classy move. And at first, the stripes, I didn't know what to think about them, honestly. At first, I was like, okay, that's a little overkill. But as I kept looking at the pen and as I carried it with me to and from work, I actually got more compliments about how the stripes gave a little bit more character to the rest of the pen. I had the Coloro for a while, and this one has definitely gotten more positive looks and more positive compliments about how it looked compared to its former brother. So a couple things here. This is a tiny pen. For size comparison, here's the pen capped against a bottle of KWZ ink, a Retro 51 Tornado, a Samsung Galaxy S7, and for a little bit more of a pen person comparison, a Rhodia Pocket Dot Pad. So as you can see, it's a tiny pen, and it's a pocket pen. Notice how I picked items that were literally in my pocket earlier today. So <laughs> you can tell what my pocket carry is, which before you ask why I was carrying a full bottle of ink in my pocket, let's not get into that. Now, the funny thing, though, uncapped, this pen's even smaller like ridiculously small. 
You saw it against the Retro 51 a few seconds ago. Here it is again without the cap. I mean, look at how tiny that is. This is truly a pocket pen. There's no way around it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the filling system now, because there is one thing I want to talk about with it. And I also wanted to give my own little take on how to do this. According to the instructions, when you go to fill the pen, the first thing they want you to do, which you have to on this eyedropper, is to go ahead and unscrew the section and then just set that off to the side. Then they want you to take the cap, take the end of the pen, unscrew the piston, and pull the piston out. Then fill the body, push the piston back in, put the section on, and then screw the piston in. I'm just going to come out and say it. That's a waste of time. And you're also most likely going to get more ink everywhere if you do it that way. The one thing I've learned with KWZ pens, <laughs> sorry, not KWZ pens. The one thing I've learned with Opus pens is that when you fill them, go ahead and just leave the piston in. And let's go ahead and grab the KWZ walkover Vistula, or walkover Vistula. Uh, I'll probably be corrected by Michael tonight when I talk to him about this. And let's go ahead and get some ink into the pen. There we go. Now, when I'm filling it, I don't look from the top into the pen. I tend to look through the side because it gives me an idea of how full the pen really is. Okay, I can go just a little bit more. There we go. And we are full. Make sure I don't have any extra ink in the eyedropper. Make some noise and put the eyedropper there on the paper. All right. So now we go ahead and get the section and screw the section back on the pen. Now, the cool thing about Opus 88, I'm going to go ahead and see if you can get a good view there before I finish screwing it in. You can kind of see the O-ring in that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and finish screwing that on. Cap off the ink. Get that off to the side. And put that on a different sheet of paper off camera. Now, here's where we prime the pen the way I kind of like to do it. So right now, there you go. Don't even have to prime it, and you're already good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this nib, though. And for that, let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, so we're using just standard Rhodia dot pad, and this is the Opus 88 Fantasia. with a broad nib. Now, as you can tell, I just inked it up. I haven't done any cut scenes, and it's already writing very beautifully and very wet. So wet, in fact, that's one second. One, two, three seconds. One, two, three, four, five seconds. This is going to be a very wet nib. Let's go ahead and put that five second one back there so you can actually see it. I forgot I had the camera zoomed in. And overall, it's a very nice feel. When I was talking about the threads a few minutes ago, you really don't notice them too much. You know you're holding the threads, but they also help you keep control of the pen. Case in point, like, Now, as you can tell, I'm having a little bit of a hard time when it comes to this pen as far as controlling the overall feel because it is a little bit small in the length department. I prefer a longer pen. So this is actually one of the few pens I can write with posted and 
writing with it posted makes a big difference for me. There we go. And everyone's favorite testing phrase. The lazy dog. You are now seeing a very good example of why all of my teachers told me at a very young age that I have to type things. <laughs> my handwriting is pure chicken scratch at this point. But as you can tell, I like it. It's a good writing pen. Other than where I lifted right here. It doesn't skip. I realize you can't see that. So let me do that on a piece of paper where you can actually see. So we're going to do that. And there wasn't a single skip there at all. Now, one other thing I want to do really quick is we're going to do a little bit of a shake test. With eyedroppers, I always want to see what you can do with them if they get jostled around in the pocket. So OK, there you have it. OK, so I thought I was done filming and started to put everything up, but then I forgot one thing in the writing sample. This nib is a broad nib. We've already talked about that. But what we didn't talk about was it actually has a little bit of line variation to it. So standard broad, and you can push it a little. I'm actually not putting that much pressure on the pen, and I was getting that much line variation. So you can have some fun with the nib. I would have felt horrible if I did the entire review, got it all put together, and then forgot that. So there you go. Back to the review. All right, so now that you've seen the pen and seen how it writes, let's go ahead and talk price. The Opus 88 Fantasia starts at $125. When I say starts at, right now that's the price you're going to find it at. Unless you have a coupon code, that's what you're going to pay. Realistically, at that price, it's kind of a hard sell. If you're going to spend that much money, you might as well spend the extra money and get a Franklin Kristoff. Because at that point, you can upgrade your nib to a Masayama nib. And to be honest, the Franklin Kristoff materials are cooler. Yeah, you're not getting ebonite for the cap or the end. But the ebonites on this pen is really just for flair. The parts that matter most, like the resin body and the section where you actually grip it, it it's resin. And a Franklin Kristoff is resin. So if you're going to go eyedropper and you're going to go over $100, $120, just go FC. Now, if you can find a coupon for this one, pick it up. It's not a bad pen to have one of in your collection. And it does write well. I'll give it that. It's a really good writer. But when it's priced, $35 to $40 higher than its larger cousins, the Picnic or the Coloro, it's a much harder sell for me to pay that much, especially when I can easily pay extra money and pick up like this Karis Penco Decograph, which is about $150. And you can find Decographs like this in the sea glass material that like the Edison Pen Company used on a couple of their models as well. Overall, it's a nice pen. It's a nice nib. It's a good body. It's great material. It's just that price point is the one sticking point I have when it comes to the Opus 88 Fantasia. So there you have my review of the Fantasia by Opus 88. If you want the pen for yourself, you can head on over to penchelay.com. The link will be in the description. 
Also, for viewers of the Inkwell, you can have a site-wide coupon over at Penchelay. All you have to do is go to penchelay.com, click on the radio podcast link at the top of the page, and enter Inkwell in the How You Heard About Us section. Now, you can find me over on Twitter and Instagram at the Inkwell, floor3media.com slash the Inkwell, or the Inkwell.com. And don't forget to support me over at patreon.com slash the Inkwell. See you next time.